Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Insights. We're here at the um, uh, Biotech Showcase meeting that's taking place in San Francisco alongside the JP Morgan uh, meeting. And as you can sort of see or hear, there's, uh, there's an awful lot of activity as, as, as people here to, to do business. I'm joined now by sorry, Colin Broom, who is the CEO of uh, Nabriva Therapeutics, Austrian company that is focusing on sort of the antibiotics area. Uh, you've got a particular area. You guys uh, listed on NASDAQ back in September, raised about $90 million. So you know, what, what are the plans with that money, Colin? So uh, uh, yes, uh, um, so our plans are to develop a new class of antibiotic for systemic use in humans, something we, we, we all desperately need new antibiotics, a new class. Uh, so Nabri have been very successful in bringing this forward and now we're investing that cash in, in the phase three program right. development uh, with the goal of getting the data and submitting uh, as a new antibiotic. Right. So that's, that's our goal. Not developed in the US but also internationally. So the, the original technology, it, it came from, was, I mean the company is Austrian, so it was Aust Austrian science originally? Well the orange of the company was a spin-off from Sandoz. Right. Uh, the company, which had an antibiotic research center in Vienna, right, uh, and that's the derivation of the name, and in front of the antibiotic research number, that's how Nibri was derived. So spun out in 2006 as a private company, right. uh, invested and continued to do the research, particularly focused on the pleuromutilin class of antibiotics, right. which other companies had tried but really hadn't really fully succeeded, right. and uh, were very successful in identifying. Uh, a molecule which is now what we call the famelin, which is our lead molecule, which is in phase three development. Uh, so the research is, is continuing. We have a research group in, in Austria. Much of the rest of the company, though, we have, for instance, develop, clinical development uh, um, and other infrastructures based in the US, where I'm based. Right. So how, how big is the company then, in terms of, you know, sort of employees, both in Austria and, and, and other places? Yeah, we have about 34 people in uh, Austria and, and 16 in the US. Right. Uh, so you've done sort of the sort of trials so far. So, so what, what has surprised you about these, uh, you know, this particular molecule that you've, that you've, you've developed? What, what, what's exciting you? Well, you know, I've been with the company for, uh, since I joined in August, as CEO uh, uh, in August of uh, 2014. I've been, been in other companies and uh, uh, what excited me was a new, you don't get an opportunity to develop a new class of antibiotic. They don't come along very long, every decade or two. Uh, that was interesting. Also the profile of the, the way it, the, the antibiotic works against a range of bacteria made this really well suited for treatment of respiratory infections. So severe pneumonias, for instance. And because it's a new class, you don't get that cross resistance. The bugs haven't seen this class before. So you don't get resistance. Uh, uh, there's no cross resistance with penicillins and other antibiotics that we have. Right. That's what's exciting and it's, and it's developable. We need it. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll sort of talk about in terms of like some of the, sort of the, the choices, but the sort of phase three trial, could you sort of give us a sort of a, a, a run through of what, what that will look like and, and what the sort of the timelines you expect? Sure. Well, we started the first of two phase three trials last year. Uh, and this trial is, is in community acquired pneumonia. So patients, someone who has pneumonia, and is admitted to the hospital. Yeah. So they're sick enough to be admitted. They start with an intravenous antibiotic, the family, and then later on as they get better, you can switch to the oral version of the drug. So that's very attractive as an antibiotic. You can stick with the same antibiotic but go oral, right. having started. So this trial is it's 740 patients in the trial. We're comparing the family with what is really current standard of care, antibiotic. So it's yeah. a comparative trial. It's blinded, of course, so we don't know who get, who's getting what. Uh, and that's a big investment. That study started, and we look to complete that trial mid next year and see data just afterwards. We have a second trial about to start. Right. So you're going to do that mid, so you, you get the readouts mid, mid 2017. And are you doing this on your own, or are you doing it in partnership with somebody else? Well, the funding, the part of you know, becoming a public company was to raise sufficient funds so we can essentially run the studies. Now we partner with contract research organizations. We don't do it ourselves. So we partner with uh, a large contract research who execute on the trial. So we, we supervise, we dictate the strategy, we give direction and executions by uh, internationally. You have to do these studies around the world, so internationally. 
So, so would the plan be for Nabriva to actually become a fully fledged you know, antibiotics company that's commercialising the, the, these products? Or? It, it's our goal to become such a company. You know, we're in late stage development. You know, we have expertise in, in developing, getting approval, but also commercialising. Right. And why can we do that as a small company? Well, the antibiotic we're developing, La Family, is really targeting on sick patients in hospital, a very targeted patient population. It doesn't need a large commercial infrastructure to get that drug on the formaries and get used in the US in hospitals. Right. We can do that. However, we look to partner, ex-US in particular, uh, other regions, because we really don't have the bandwidth to execute or commercialize outside of the US. Now, so antibiotics and antibiotic resistance is, at the moment, is a uh, a very, very hot topic. While you've been developing your own products, have there been some interesting regulatory challenges that you know those issues have, have, have thrown up? Well, I have to say that the environment has become much more friendly to companies developing antibiotics, and needed to, because if you just go back three years, uh, three years ago, it was almost impossible to develop a drug for pneumonia. You need to do mega studies. Uh, but the FDA, the EMA, the regulators are now really behind the drug companies. We feel we're supported. They've changed the endpoints to make these studies more feasible uh, to do. So the, the regulatory environment has been paved now uh, and less confused. So this is like the sort of the new drugs for bugs, uh, those sort of initiatives that, that, that we're seeing. Yes, that, 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 offshoots of that and, and uh, you know, initiatives that have been done, not, not just from government, but regulators as well. To demonstrate, you know, to show, you know, identify new endpoints. How can you do these studies more efficiently, yeah. without compromising on safety and these other things? Yeah. But also, have you sort of thought about how the, I guess, the sort of the integrity of of the activity is not compromised by mis misprescription, misuse? <laughs> Have you had any sort of plans in your sort of your uh, your commercial rollout on, on how you protect that, um, you know, from resistance? Um, the plurimutilin as a class binds at a specific, very well conserved site, you know, within the the protein making machinery in in the cell. That doesn't change much, so the the liability for resistance is relatively low. Now. Resistance develops for every bugs, but we haven't seen, we've seen very, very, very limited resistance to date. Uh, again, prudent use of antibiotics. You're going to, not going to use this antibiotic for something it's not going to be effective in. So this is really targeted for the sicker patient, who you're going to admit, and has severe pneumonia, because it covers all the bacteria that cause patients to be sick. It doesn't affect some other bugs that you don't need to be effective against. So it's really very targeted in terms of its profile. And that's good in antibiotics. You don't want to use broad spectrum antibiotics if you only have a, a one bug that you're trying to affect. So it's targeted, I would say, for respiratory infections. So these meetings in San Francisco, JP Morgan, the Biotech Showcase, it's all about you know, people getting together, partnering, raising their sort of profile in front of investors. You know, I mean, you've, you've got, you, 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 you appear to be well funded, you've, you've got your programs in place. It doesn't look like you need to have too many partners. But what, what are you hoping to get out of you know, uh, th this week? Well, you always, you always, the rest of the world certainly interested in partnership, uh, renewing a relationship, but also we're looking, we're looking well ahead, three, five years, as you have to. And you know, I said that we could commercialize ourselves in, in the US. As a product like this antibiotic becomes used more broadly, you then may need US partnerships as well. For, for, for instance, primary care, you know, you, you, as a small company, you can't, uh, as it were, promote or commercialize to a primary care audience. As people become more familiar with this antibiotic, as it gets more broadly used, uh, we may need to partner for the US then, but certainly the rest of the world. Right. And are, are there, do you have any plans of bringing in assets from, from you know, other places to, you know, to build your, your own, well, I guess, leverage your own commercial infrastructure? Yes, yeah, so that's a very, very good point. We look both ways, in license, out license. You, know, you do a deal, but we'd like to add to our portfolio. We have a number of very interesting things that we're looking at in our research program, uh, but there are also other companies who really want to leverage our expertise in drug development. You know, we have experts in drug development of anti-infectives. Uh, so companies will approach us, we're looking at things. Uh, yeah, it's a great environment to meet, to, to forge those uh, relationships, initial relationships, and uh, find partners. 
Oh well, good luck with that, Colin. Thanks very much for stopping by. Cheers. Bye bye.